Hello friends, looking at current affairs for 4th May, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 16, we we'll look at them in detail. The first one, Supreme Court puts critics of Aadhaar pan linkage in a spot. So this is the case which is going on before the Supreme Court, we have discussed it yesterday as well, regarding section 139AA of the Income Tax Act. So this section 139AA was added to the Income Tax Act through the finance bill. So this was the controversy as well. So actually what is finance bill? Finance bill is part of the budget. So passing the, of the budget by the parliament actually means two bills being passed. That is appropriation bill and finance bill. So appropriation bill has all the details about how money would be appropriated to various you know, authorities. And in the finance bill, the pro provisions are there for taxation, where the money would come from. So in this finance bill, this section 139AA amendment was put and it was passed. So this is the case here. So what does it provide for? What does this section 139AA do? It makes PAN and ADHA linkage mandatory for filing income tax returns. So this has been challenged before the Supreme Court and the petitioner is saying that this is affecting the citizen's right to make free, voluntary and informed consent. Because under Aadhaar Act of 2016-2, so, Aadhaar Act of 2016, again, that was a controversy because it was passed as a money bill. So, in this act also, what was provided was that the Aadhaar provision is, Aadhaar is entitled to citizens. So, a citizen is entitled to it. It is not mandatory for citizens to get it. But what is being done here is that it is this linkage is being made mandatory. And this law as such is questioned in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court is now asking the petitioner that, can a person voluntarily be decide whether he wants to be part of income tax regime or it becomes mandatory for them? So when the tax regime is mandatory for them, following the laws for that purpose, how can you have a choice in that? The concern actually is that the biometric information is taken by under Aadhaar. So all these details and linkage which is being provided for, there is a fear that this would result in mass surveillance. Because the possibility is there when such information is collected. So those are the concerns which are being put forth. But the government says that this is to ensure tax compliance, to bring equality as such, so that taxpayers and non-taxpayers are at the equal footing. They also have to pay taxes there. So that is what has been argued here. So the petitioner is saying there is a direct collision because Aadhaar Act is voluntary in nature and this section 139AA is making it mandatory. But both are laws. So that is here you can see. Also the government is arguing that right to informational self-determination that whether you want to provide your information or not, this is not an absolute right. You do provide, citizens do provide information to the government at various stages like at the time of birth, death, marriages. Also census act, it, it collects a lot of personal data as well. Then next news item is Data leaks not from UID AI but from states. So now there have been a case, a report which has come forth by the Center for Internet and Society, which is a Bengaluru based organization. So it has said that many other names, numbers and personal details have been leaked. So this leak has been clarified. The government has said in the Supreme Court itself that these leaks have not taken place from UID AI. So UID AI, Unique Identification Authority of India. So this is not the authority from where this Aadhaar details have been leaked. It has taken place from the states, from their offices and agencies which handle this data. So not a single leak has come from here. So there is a need for educating these authorities also, the government agencies also, as we discussed yesterday as well, is what comes forth here. Also, it has been argued that it's just the Aadhaar number leaked, so that would not provide any information. The biometric information as such, as such has not been leaked. Then next is DOT's Tarang Sanchar portal to clean the air over, to clear the air over mobile tower emissions. So this is actually a website, a web portal, Tarang Sanchar. So this has been initiated by Department of Telecommunication and it will be providing information on mobile towers and the EMF compliance which they have. So electromagnetic field emissions, whether they are complying with it or not, the government norms, that would be provided on this portal. So this is an initiative taken because there are various concerns of health hazards because of mobile towers being established. So in many places, especially in Goa, people are protesting and opposing setting up of towers for the mobile 
operators. So here, this is the initiative taken, Tarang Sanchar portal. So you can put in the details. It's You can search for any locality. You can come to know what is the norm and whether it is followed or not. So this is there. Also, DOT is saying that the standards which we are prescribing are stricter than International Commission on Ionizing Radiation Protection Standards. So this is also a claim being made by Department of Telecommunication. Also, it says that there is no scientific evidence of any health concern from low power mobile based transceiver station. So, if it is high power, if emissions of a high frequency, then it may take place. But for low power mobile based transceiver stations, there is no evidence of any health concern. So, there is a need to educate the citizens and facilitate the mobile tower construction and also ensure that compliance is also there. So, this is a G2B as well as G2C service. So, G2C is government to citizens. So e-governance as we say, so government to citizens facilitation is also there providing this information and also G2B means ensuring that compliance also takes place. So this term unit under Department of Telecommunication, Telecom Enforcement Resource and Monitoring. So this will look into whether the whether there are any violations or these mobile towers are following the norms. So that would also be looked into. Then next news item is. Rupees 21,000 fine on women using mobile phones in public in UP village. So this UP village in Mathura has banned women from using mobile phones in public and they would be fined. So this is a decision taken by an all-male panchayat at Mandora village. So this is there. They can use in homes but not in outside because of the fears that girls elope with boys because of use of mobile phones. So this is a decision taken. Of course, it is a very retrograde step. We'll have maybe an editorial on this too tomorrow. So this is the news. Next is endangered dolls to run free in Eastern Ghats. So these are dolls which are Indian wild dogs. So these are endangered. So in IUCN also listing endangered. Next is critically endangered. So these are at endangered stage even under the Wildlife Protection Act of India of 1972. There are schedules under which animals are listed based on their no conservation status so conservation status here they are listed in schedule 2 schedule 1 generally are critically endangered so dolls are under schedule 2 and endangered under iucn so these are to the indira gandhi zoological park which is located in kambalakonda reserve forest in vishakhapatnam andhra pradesh it is having a conservation breeding center for these dolls and what it is going to do now is it is going to release these into the wild forests again. So this initiative is being taken. Such an initiative has been taken to protect a species earlier too. Two other such initiatives in India have already taken place. This is a third initiative. So when UPSC also asked you about in situ conservation and ex situ, so this is not in situ conservation. So this is not in its natural habitat. So zoological parks are these are places where conservation breeding centers are there. So this zoological park is now going to release them in the forests. So you can see it's given here. It's a 1.5 crore conservation project. So this will ensure long-term survival and recovery of this endangered species. Other two initiatives which have already taken place are in Darjeeling, this Himalayan zoological park where red panda conservation initiatives were taken. It was released from the zoological park breeding into the open into the natural habitat in situ habitat and pygmy hawk conservation program in assam the next news item is niti io for less teaching more research so this is again under the three-year vision document of niti io it has suggested that in world-class institutions of india priority should be given to research and the teaching responsibilities of these professionals as such should be reduced so this is which will be these world class universities it will come up with that list also later then another suggestion which it has given is that there should be a new national science technology and innovation foundation which should be established with a distinguished scientist as its head so that science and technology departments ministries government private sector bodies all can be collaborated and national issues and interventions can be recommended by it so all the projects which have been initiated their progress should be reviewed every six months and course correction should be proposed by it to achieve the goals so this is the foundation proposed as well. Also, it has pushed for public-private partnership in science and technology also. So this, it says that since government has limited funds, the private sector can provide funding for this. And priority sectors have also been listed for science and technology projects. So these are water management, 
एग्रीकल्चर एनर्जी वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट हेल्थ कनेक्टिविटी एंड सिक्योरिटी सो दीज आर पार्ट ऑफ दिस ड्राफ्ट थ्री अ विजन डॉक्यूमेंट ऑफ नीति आयोग next news item is white house hails infosys hiring plan so the hiring plan of infosys in which it plans to have technology hub set up in us and four such technology hubs and it would result in at least 10000 americans being employed as such so this has been appreciated by the white house means us administration next is brahmos missile achieves rare feat so this is the advanced brahmos block 3 lacm means land attack cruise missile so this has been successfully test fired from andaman and nicobar islands so this is having an in, a significance because this from this region it can also reach the malacca strait under the range which it has now earlier the range of ramos was 290 km because we were not signatories to mtcr missile technology control regime but now since we have signed mtcr the range has increased to 450 km and there are plans to increase this range to 600 km too. Brahmos you should know it's a supersonic cruise missile jointly developed by India and Russia and also we plan to sell it to third world friendly countries as such too so it has precision strike capabilities to fire and forget capabilities too so it's a cruise missile so now the success of this test is actually that now the Brahmos missile can hit land based targets as well as sea based targets and it can have the capability to be launched from land from sea from sub sea and also from air so this is what we have achieved with brahmos so this is regarding brahmos missile you can see fire and forget capability precision strike this range has now increased to 90 to 450 and the mtcr mtcr is now a group of 35 states because india has also become a member in 2016 what this mtcr does missile technology control regime it puts restrictions on you know proliferation of rockets and unmanned aerial vehicles capable of delivering payload of at least 500 kg to a range of at least 300 km so from 300 km onwards and from a payload of 500 kg onwards if you are selling buying selling is happening transactions happening of these rockets and uavs then there are restrictions for the member states here that they cannot provide it to other countries who are not members of mtcr so now we have become a member of mtcr so this has been facilitated russia is already a member china is not a member pakistan is not a member with nsg so nsg mtcr wasenal group and australia group wasenal arrangement and australia group these are the four nuclear regimes which india wants to be part of mtcr membership is the only one which we have acquired as of now nsg is what we have been trying for for long their membership can be ha- happen through, through consensus and china has been blocking our membership also saying that both india and pakistan should become of mem- become members of nsg together that is nuclear suppliers group then the next news item is supreme court seeks khurshid's advice in talaq case so the triple talaq case which is going on before the supreme court now it has asked salman khurshid a senior advocate to become the amicus curiae means the friend before the constitutional bench which is scheduled to hear these petitions so these uh, the three cases ripple talaq polygamy and nikah halala they are set to violate fundamental rights of muslim women so that is why this hearing is taking place this case we have discussed in detail in another video i'll give you the link to that so you can look into all these aspects as well then next news item is Jammu and Kashmir students to get more scholarships. So now the government has announced, the Human Resource Development Ministry, that Jammu and Kashmir students pursuing higher education will get more seats under PM Scholarship Scheme to how many more? You don't need to remember the facts and figures. UPSC does not ask such facts and figures. And also under the Rashtriya Uchchhatar Shiksha Abhiyan, the grants given to engineering colleges here has been increased. Again, which ones is not important. Always remember what is important in UPSC. Something which will be of relevance at the end of the the year to the year which you are preparing for so june 2018 otherwise it does not make any sense so this is also there rashtriya uchchhatar shiksha abhiyan is what is important that is why we have added and also for initiatives been taken in jammu and kashmir by the government so just that you should know for writing an answer in mains and for prelims at least you should know this scheme it may be asked in mains as well so rashtriya uchchhatar shiksha abhiyan was actually launched in 2013 so it aims to provide strategic funding to eligible state higher educational institutions so those are the funding provision which is done through this 
So this is the scheme. Then next is China tightens rules for online news providers. So China has issued new internet regulations so that the control on online news providers is also there of China, with China Chinese government as such. So all these micro bloggers, social media accounts, instant messaging services, if they are providing any news, even selecting or editing news, they need a license to post any report, comment about the government, about the economy, military, foreign affairs, even social issues. So this is the new law which has come up. So the restrictions imposed on internet can be seen from here. Then next is package to resolve NPAs gets cabinet not. So this is a package to resolve non-performing assets. So the cabinet has approved this. So this also includes in initiating a promulgating an ordinance to amend the Banking Regulation Act of 1949 so that the RBI is empowered to take actions to check bad loans. So details have not been provided. So if an ordinance comes forth, of course, this is put into action, we'll come to know the details too. So NPAs is a huge problem, non-performing assets. Gross and non-performing assets have increased from 9.1% to 9.1% in September 2016 from in one year. Last year in September 2015, it was 5.1%. So in a year, this has been a drastic increase. What are these non-performing assets? There's a term called stressed assets. What is stressed assets? We'll look into it. So you can see stressed assets is a term which concludes the gross non-performing assets plus standard restructure advances and write-ups. So, so this is the equation here you can see. So stressed assets is inclusion of three aspects. NPS, restructured loans and write-ups. What are each of these? So these are all the assets. So all these loans are called assets of the government, of the bank. Why are they assets of the bank? Because this is how the banks earn. They, they take deposits and they provide loans. The interest on the loans are their earnings. So if the asset, these are the earnings, are the assets. If the assets do not repay, then they become non-performing and the stress assets. Each one of them we'll see. So what is an NPA? Non-performing asset is, an, is one on which the interest or principal has not been repaid by the borrower for a specific period of time. It's taken as 90 days as such. So in three months, 90 days as such, if the amount is not coming forth, neither the interest or principal, then it has to be classified as a non-performing asset. What is a restructured asset? So in such cases, you it, in some cases, it may so happen that if the asset is non-performing, there is a leeway given. The interest rate may be reduced by the bank or part of the loan can be converted into an equity so that you know the banks can recover them. Uh, additional financing can be provided if there's a project to make it viable or some combination of these measures are brought in. You know, time frame is increased. So that is called a restructured asset. So that is also eventually it is not a non-performing asset as of now because now changes have been made. Restructuring has been done. So that is why it is a restructured asset but essentially basically it is a non-performing asset. So in stressed assets that is also added. NPS plus restructured loans and third is written off assets. So these written off assets means that the asset which is there in the bank's balance sheet this has been written off. So it's not taken up as such in the balance sheet. So means it is compensated for from through some other means. So when you know banks are also capitalized by the government. So any initiative can, which is there which can be you know taken care of they can take care of this asset which was non-performing of course that is why there is a need to do that. So those are called written off assets. Now written off assets do not mean that the borrower has no liability and does not have to pay anything to the bank. The bank is doing writing of asset for its balance sheet. Not for the borrower. Borrower still has to pay it. The bank will still try to extract it from the borrower. But it has written off in its balance sheet. So that is called written off asset. But still it is an NPA eventually. So that is why stress assets include all three. So this is there. So this one thing you should know. And another thing which is there is the economic survey has also spoken. Because of stressed assets we have a twin balance sheet problem. So it's not just the NPAs which are there in the banks, but the companies are also under stress. That is why these NPAs are accumulating. So this is the twin balance sheet problem. Balance sheet of N banks also and balance sheet of companies are under stress. So that is the status presently. And a suggestion which was given by economic survey was that PARA, Public Sector Asset Rehabilitation Agency should be established. In layman language, this has also been called the bad bank. A bank which will take up all the bad loans. Not all, but significant bad loans of banks. 
of public sector banks. So this will be then rehabilitation will be done for these assets like trying to make them viable. So this bad bank has to be set up is a suggestion given by economic survey. It has not been accepted by the finance minister neither announced in the budget as such. But this is a suggestion which is doing the rounds. So means the bank's balance sheets would be cleared and then para will take care of these bad loans. So because the banks when they have NPAs they are not able to lend further. If they are not able to lend further the economy as such suffers. So that is why every, the economy will not function because how the how these entities various sectors how will they get loans if the banks are under stress. So it will result into a vicious circle. So this to end this vicious cycle what has been suggested is the bad bank which should be set up so here you can see why because of the NPS. so credit growth is slowing credit growth means the industry is not getting loans then so the growth as such of the economy will be impacted so then the next is the details are given here about para 2 so how will it, or how would it work so if we purchase these loans from the banks and try to convert that into equity or auction them so some way it can recapitalize these you know assets as such non-performing assets and make them viable next is national steel policy 2017 announced by center so this is the national steel policy 2017 approved by the center so it aims at attracting 10 lakh crore investment in steel sector by 2030-31 what it basically provides for is that preference would be given to domestically manufactured iron and steel products in government procurements so this is an important part so it means imported steel would not be used preference would be given to domestically manufactured ones products so this is there so all government tenders which would be opened up now for price bidding this policy will be made applicable to it next is allocation to sampada scheme to decrease agro waste and modernized processing so this has also been approved sampada scheme for agro it's an acronym scheme for agro marine processing and development of agro processing clusters so this is a scheme for the period 2016 to 20 and this is an umbrella scheme incorporating all ongoing schemes of ministry of food processing industries so schemes like mega food parks integrated cold chains and value addition food safety and quality assurance infrastructure agro processing clusters backward and forward linkage creation provision so all these schemes have been subsumed under this umbrella scheme so this will supplement agriculture, modernize food processing and decrease agro waste as well. Because a huge amount of agricultural produce gets wasted because food processing has not been established as such to the extent expected in India. So this is Sampada. Next is government mulls changes to Udan scheme to attract more players. So Udan scheme, Ude Desh Ka Aam Nagrik, which has been announced by the government, which is the regional connectivity scheme. So Udan is another name for this same scheme, which was announced in the aviation policy, Indian civil aviation policy of 2016. So this has also capped, you should know that for one hour flight, the capping is of 2,500 rupees for the airfare. So this scheme has made biddings, counter bidding were done and now it has been provided to five airlines to have these routes which have been selected and on these, these airlines will have exclusive rights to fly. So these were air, airports which were not viable, which were not functioning. So now they would be made viable and these routes would be initiated. So of course there may be losses initially that would be taken care of. So that would be the funding required. Viability gap funding will be provided by the center. Also, there is a state pro, uh, provision which also be, should be there. State uh, funding should also come and this will be put into effect. So, this is a scheme. So, now demands are being made by these airlines that this exclusive rights which are given for three years should be extended to five years. So, this five years extension, the Ministry of Civil Aviation is not ready for it. The center says that three years is sufficient. It need not be increased to five years another demand which has been made is that single air engine aircraft should also be allowed to fly on these routes which have been selected under Odan. but the directorate general of civil aviation says that this should not be allowed because of security concerns but safety concerns as such so this is being uh, the government is saying that we would try to persuade director general of civil aviation to allow single engine aircrafts to fly to so this is there. Another demand which has been made by the airlines is that the that there should be higher subsidy for helicopters. 
and others which are there which will be considered so for helicopters actually for half an hour flight the capping is 2500 rupees for airlines it is one hour for helicopters it is less so let's see the decisions will be taken so this is just the news that demands are being made to modify odan scheme so center is considering that next is the last one NASA's inflatable greenhouse could feed astronauts on Mars. So NASA is designing an inflatable greenhouse where crops can be grown. So these will be having plants and crop production done. So for nutrition, this will be facilitated. Air revitalization can be done through them. Water recycling and waste recycling is also possible. So this will be the inflatable greenhouse. So this already NASA has done these experiments and has been successful on ISS, International Space Station. So now it is it is planning to have it done one day even on moon or Mars as well. So this is the initiative. So that is it. Thank you.